We've got undervests. Got a few different types actually. Um, and it's probably a, a garment that a lot of people either underestimate or don't maybe think as important as some other garments. When it comes to wicking, wicking mm. moisture, avoiding a chill, staying warm, uh, equally managing temperature. So there's also a relationship between outer layers and under layers. And uh, some large, holy fabrics actually create a good pockets of air when you need to be warm. But equally, when you open a zip, say, then you get that air transfer yeah. and the warmth can you know, uh, leave the body and you can stay cool. Yeah, I mean, there's something that people didn't used to ever really think about, you know, to the point where old school riders that I still go out with sometimes on the bike still wear cut off t-shirts under their cycling kit. Um, because that was always the norm and if it was cold you'd put two t-shirts on um, and obviously under vests have kind of really advanced over the last 10-15 years um, and now with everything being more aero, more fitted, you want a vest that fits under that so with a skin tight sleeve you want a vest that will sit under that material nicely, you don't want it all crinkled up underneath. All these items are made to go in conjunction with every other one Exactly. and it's, it's, the, it's the top to toe look. The, and every item's thought out and informed by the previous one, um, in, right down to where the bib sits, so they're not sat on a seam, etc., etc. So, yeah, undervest is really important, particularly if you get the choice wrong and the weather changes through the day and you can find yourself overcooking towards the end of the day. Undervest, obviously, you can't change very easily. No. You could add a layer, no. you can take off a layer, but if you get your undervest wrong, then you're in a really difficult situation unless you're easily yeah. able to stop on the side of the road. And, and some vests it. can get, obviously, if you're sweating profusely, can get ridiculously heavy as well yeah um, so it's it's as I say picking the right garment for the right conditions so that's exactly what we've yeah. done here is you've got uh, you've got the high mesh layer uh, areas and then you've got these that draw the moisture into the channels and then it can dissipate more quickly and that's mm. something that we've tried to do here but equally um, you know good thermal undervests we've talked about them as well in the past where you want something soft that creates, um, you want it to be warm, but equally it needs to move the moisture quickly. Because as soon as you get cold air mixed with a chill of uh, moisture, then that actually does start to make you cold. So if you can avoid the moisture staying next to your skin, you can actually take a lot of cold air and stay warm. That's, that's the kind of key part. Yeah, of that. And, it, and it is the first layer you put on. I mean, you, you talk to any kind of um, mountaineer, walkers that walk to you know, climbing mountains, skiers as well, you know, it's the first thing they think about is that first layer as they layer up, you know, the importance of it, when you're hot, when you're sweating, you know, that gets, you get wet and cold, that's the first thing that, you know, all the other layers are almost irrelevant once you, you know, that base layer. Um, and, and socially for cyclists, quite a lot often, you know, stopping at cafes and things is, is, is a big part of cycling socially, you know, and you're always told to strip that first layer off and, and you want a layer that's not gonna be wringing wet when you sat there, but at the same time, you want it to wick and dry in the time you're in yeah. that cafe, so when you put the other layers on, you're not cold.